All right. Well, great. Hey, thank you everybody for taking the time to join us today to review the HH2 uh, AP routing and approvals. I think everybody will be pretty excited about what they see today. I know this product's been very popular since it came out and they're continuing to make lots of enhancements uh, on a pretty regular basis. So thanks again. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions through the chat panel. I'll keep an eye on, on it and interject with questions as they come along. So I'd like to introduce Kevin Hadley of HH2. I think that's still what you're called today, Kevin. Uh, Kevin, VP of Sales. And I will let you take it away and uh, introduce yourself. All right, <clears throat> very good. Uh, thank you, Jeff, I appreciate that. Hopefully everybody can hear us okay. Jeff, you broke up just a little bit. That may just be the, uh, you know, with Zoom. Uh, I'm not sure. We may. I may end up also turning off my uh, video. Sometimes that uses some bandwidth and and that. So, uh, but but as always, Jeff, thanks so much for the opportunity. We have been uh, working with Jeff and the team uh, at Skyline slash Sockeye for years, um, uh, for as long as I've been here, actually about 16 years, which has been great. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, the product that we are going to be taking a look at today is our document flow product. As Jeff and I spoke a little bit earlier or, or traded some emails, he mentioned the fact that uh, some of you are current customers of HH2. So thank you very much for being a, a client. And I believe everybody on this presentation today is using Sage 300 CRE. Um, Jeff, it looks like we've had some more attendees than uh, we had previously anticipated. Do you know if, if those uh, who are on today are all Sage 300? Yeah, good question. And I did see that as well. So we got some uh, Sage Intact customers on here as well today. Oh. Okay, all right. So some people who have already transitioned into Intact. Okay, uh, that's great, good to know. Okay, I'm gonna stop, uh, stop my video at least and then I'll share my screen. But to each one of you, thank you very much. What you're going to see today is going to, um, I, it's the same product, whether you're using Sage 100 Contractor, if somebody happens to see this or view this after the fact, uh, it will work uh, the same way for Sage 300 CRE, and then now, of course, Sage Intact. I'm happy to report that we are integrating uh, two of our products with Intact, our remote payroll product and this AP product that we'll look at today. So we'll go ahead and stop that video. Um, I will go ahead and start sharing my screen. And we're gonna go with that right there. And uh, everyone should be seeing uh, a little PowerPoint that says HH2 Cloud Services. Does that look uh, okay, Jeff, out there? Yep, you're not full okay. screen and you're not in presenter mode. I'm not sure if you're if you're supposed to be, but um yeah let me go ahead and just enter that uh, just go up there and and we'll kind of um actually we'll we'll take that down i i will go ahead and uh we'll go ahead and play this from the beginning okay are you are you good there does that look better yeah, we got it thanks all right okay thanks everybody for for your patience there and and again thanks so much for your time uh, we appreciate it. Just quick highlights about HH2. We have been uh, offering cloud-hosted uh, service solutions for the construction industry for uh, well over 16 years. Again, I, I joined the company about a, a year or so after uh, we really launched this product out in the industry. Uh, it was built initially for Sage uh, Timberline, which is what it was called back in the day. It's uh, Sage 300 CRE now. Um, then we started integrating with, uh, of course, uh, Sage 100 Contractor. We've been doing that for several years now. And then, as mentioned, as Intact has been rolling out, uh, we were one of the first companies to uh, work with Sage in regards to that integration of this particular product, the AP product, into Intact. Okay, so um, again, our products and services have been out there a long time. We built our product from the ground up. Uh, in the cloud, 
okay, before the cloud was really cool. And the other thing to note about HH2, uh, because it's in the cloud, our product can be used anytime, anywhere, really on any device. So as you see here on the screen, we support laptops, desktop, computers. Uh, you're just gonna go to a web browser and that's what I'm gonna use today. We're gonna be right in the product. We'll, we'll, we won't spend a ton of time on slides. Uh, we also have native apps for both iOS or Apple devices and Android. So we support both of those platforms. If you are using a Surface tablet, that is just really a glorified laptop, um, we, you would just use the web browser on a Surface tablet. But if you're using, uh, again, uh, an iPad or, or a Galaxy tablet, uh, you, know, you would typically download uh, our app uh, to use that. We also support phones as well. So again, whether you're doing this on your mobile phone, tablet, or on the web. So we support all of those. Um, we're, so the, the, the agenda today is really, we're gonna talk a little bit about how HH2 works, um, how we integrate or synchronize with Sage. We're gonna talk, uh, then we're gonna transition into invoice acquisition or obtaining, how does HH2 obtain or gather those invoices from your system? And how do they get into HH2? We're gonna then talk about the approval workflow and we'll show you a couple of those that I've already set up, but just really how easy it is in our system to uh, design workflows that work best for your company. Uh, we'll also, if there's some interest, we're, we'll also dive into the credit card portion. So uh, gathering credit cards from the field, job costing them, routing those through approval and importing those into your accounting systems. Uh, we'll do that too. Um, we won't necessarily talk or discuss at length the reimbursement workflow. Uh, for the most part, it's, it's almost exactly like a credit card workflow, right? You've used your own personal card or, or whatever, and you just want to get reimbursed rather than a company card that you might be issued. Uh, but then, you know, again, we're going to be right in the product today. And, and as Jeff knows, and as we've done this for several years, showing the product and really go, getting into the weeds is, is our preference um, on these webinars. And if you have questions, uh, Jeff will be monitoring those. Uh, feel free to throw those in the chat on Zoom um, and we'll try our best to uh, pause and Jeff will interrupt me and, uh, and let me know, hey, we've got a question. Maybe we wanna address it then. So you don't necessarily need to wait to the end to ask those questions. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the foundation of HH2 and the integration piece. I, I mentioned a little bit of that. We started out with 300, uh, uh, went into uh, Sage 100 uh, for several years and now intact. So what does that mean? What, what does integration look like when, when we say that? Because it, it means something different to what we have found to other third parties who say they quote, integrate with the accounting system. Well, with HH2, some of you are current clients, you already have a, what we call an integration client or a sync client that is sitting on your server, okay? And that integration client um, automatically connects and pulls information directly from Sage. So you really have one source of truth uh, and that is your Sage ERP solution. And as you add jobs, cost codes, employees, POs, um, change orders or commitments uh, in the system, as you add vendors, um, all of that information that you are adding into your accounting system will automatically be added into HH2, okay, into the cloud. Now in our system, you can set it to the sync client to run you know, different intervals. It's up to you. Typically nowadays, I would say the vast majority of our customers are saying, yeah, set it up to run on the continuous sync. So uh, every five minutes, HH2 is looking for any new information that will automatically sync up to the cloud, okay? Um, so what that means for people in the field who are working in our product, uh, whether that be remote time or AP document flow, et cetera. Uh, they're actually choosing jobs, cost codes, vendors, uh, commitments that came directly from the accounting system. Just know 
that once you put it in the accounting system, it's gonna automatically sync in the background. Now, information, especially as we're talking about AP, right? Processes, credit cards, invoice uh, routing. Um, as they start, um, I would say manipulating or uh, approving invoices, coding invoices or credit cards in the field, those are going to go through that approval process that we just spoke of in HH2, or all of this is done in the cloud before it gets into your specific accounting system, okay? So just know that integration there is seamless and it's very nice. Now, since we're talking about uh, AP, um, let's talk about how we get invoices into our system today. Uh, we have several different methods. One is to scan from an email address. So if your company currently has um, you know, uh, emails coming into a specific AP uh, email address, uh, great, just let us know what that is. HH2 will hook into that email and be able to uh, pull the images uh, or attachments off of those emails and automatically acquire those and put them into what we call a document acceptance phase, right? And we'll, I'll show you that here in a second, but just know that we can monitor an email address. Some of you uh, have a folder on your network and you're still getting a lot of paper. We don't hear a lot about this any uh, as much as we used to, but uh, if you have, let's say you're, uh, you know, you still have a bunch of invoices coming in via mail. You've got somebody uh, undoing the envelope, opening up the envelope, and they're scanning on your scanner and you have it go to a folder on your network. Well, we can monitor that as well. So we can scan from an email, monitor a folder on your network. Uh, we can also gather invoices from a mobile device that will mainly, we'll, we'll mainly talk about that in regards to the uh, credit card receipts. And then you can do an upload to the web. Now, if you happen to just have uh, an invoice come in to either a personal email, uh, you know, you might, just save that document to your desktop and upload it to HH2 or just forward it on to the AP address and we'll gather it. So just know that there's multiple options there for you. Okay, so that's a little bit one about HH2, two, uh, a little bit about what we're going to go over today, three, um, how we're acquiring invoices. So just remember that. Uh, that's how we're gathering that information. Now, what I'm going to do, as I mentioned, we're a fully hosted cloud solution. So I'm actually in our website in HH2, every company, uh, and especially those who are on that are current customers, you have your own unique HH2 URL. Mine's just called sales S3001. And I'm gonna log in as an admin. So please know that everything that I'm doing at this point uh, right now, I'll let you know when I, I'm you know, going to log in as other users. Um, but right now I'm logged in as an admin and it just took me to the last place this admin was, you know, if she's working in payroll, she can go into remote payroll. These are just the different applications that we have here off to the left-hand side. They're just buttons that we use. So if I, you know, if I'm going to do some payroll time approval, I can go into there. If I want to go back to AP and maybe I want to go into my document acceptance. So this is our menu. Okay, these are different configurations and all of this we kind of train you on, but we're gonna focus uh, first and foremost about uh, the document acceptance phase and then data entry. Now these individuals going into document acceptance and or data entry may be one and the same, or you may be a little bit larger company and you've got some other assistants in AP that are solely responsible for making sure invoices are in the system, that the pages are correct, and then you know they they just accept these pages, um, and you, then you may have others in the company that might be responsible for maybe doing some partial coding and then sending them out um, on their workflow. Again, it really depends on how you uh, decide to set stuff up. Think of document acceptance as just a repository where all invoices come in. And they come into this queue because I might find that one of the uploads that HH2 received from a customer had multiple different invoices in it. And I might wanna say, well, these three pages look like they belong together. 
So I would go highlight those pages and the click thumbs up saying those pages belong together. Um, I'm gonna deselect all of those. Maybe this, instead of being an invoice is a blank page, or maybe I need to see that a little bit uh, in more detail. I just double click on it and I can see this invoice. If it happened to come in horizontally or whatever, and I need to rotate it back up, whatever I need to do, uh, it's right there. We'll just go ahead and save that one. Uh, but yet you get the idea. This is just an area for me to go in, see that these are legitimate invoices before they even go to the coding phase, okay? So I like to show that first. Um, I also like to just upload a, a document. So I'm just gonna browse for files on my computer. This is one that I like to use just because it's simple, easy to do on a demo and I'll just upload it. So very fast, very efficient, very easy. I have my document acceptance set by acquire date, uh, ascending or descending. That's just typically uh, whatever you would like. Also, some people have multiple sources. They, they may be such a large company that we need to monitor multiple folders and we want to you know, just see folders that have gone into Nancy's folder or Bob's folder or whatever. So again, just know that there's a, a lot of different features and functionality here. Let's go ahead and just grab these two that I just uploaded and give it the thumbs up. Okay, not to waste any more time. Uh, we'll just say, hey, we want to accept that. I can, I can move the pages around if they're out of order, et cetera. But again, don't need to get too far into the weeds there. So again, I just accepted those. So if I wanted to accept a bunch of these pages, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you know, these or whatever, and just keep accepting them until this queue is empty. It's just really up to you. Now, as I mentioned, once a document is accepted, it transitions into what we call the data entry phase. Now, there's a couple of reasons uh, or methods to our madness here at HH2. We don't automatically OCR the document when it first comes into HH2 because we don't want to OCR, you know, garbage pages that you may not need, right? That's just more overhead on our system. And the reason we accept them and go, they go move to data entry is because that is where the OCR occurs. So transitioning from data accept, uh, acceptance into data entry, I know that these pages will have been OCR. And that just stands for optical character recognition for some of you. And it just really what it means is HH2 just looked at this document and made everything readable text, okay, in our system. And the reason we do that is because we're going to use some features or enhancements that HH2 has by creating uh, a template for each individual vendor, right? Because I, as you can see here off to the right-hand side, um, HH2 has already looked up uh, the vendor in, in that we have in the system and says, hey, we've got a vendor called A1 Electric that probably has either this address that we automatically read from the system or a phone number that we picked up. And uh, it's going to automatically maybe attempt that first pick at the vendor. Now, if this is the first time this invoice has come through HH2 for A1 Electric, I have these little icons over here or capture icons where I can say, hey, every time for A1 Electric, the invoice is typically found right here. And I would highlight that particular area on my invoice, okay? And uh, same thing with date, amounts, description. And then once you create the template, when I go in and I'm starting to work on these invoices again, maybe the following Monday or whenever you uh, take care of your invoicing, um, the next time I get an invoice from A1 Electric, all of this stuff will populate for me, okay, by creating those templates. I'm gonna uh, uh, tap on uh, autofill. And as you can see, a couple things. One, I got a warning up at the very top. So. If your eyes went to the top and you notice this gold bar, it says a document with this same code and vendor already exists. So let me just diverge, take a, a, a real quick detour for a second. If you think back about the fact that HH2 integrates or synchronizes all your 
uh, information in SAGE. We, we sync up all of your historical information in AP as well. And the reason we have to do that is so that we can protect you against fraud, we can protect you against double uh, billing against a certain invoice or paying a certain invoice twice. So that's why that information came up and warned me. And there's other warnings and things that would say, hey, you can't do anything because I've got some things turned on where um, it will automatically say, hey, you, you, you've got to delete this invoice because it's, it's, it's a duplicate. But for today's demo, let's go ahead and just kind of run in and put today's date. So today is what, 524? I can't believe how uh, quickly the month's gone on. I'm going to put 524-2022 just as our invoice number so we can track this through the system. I won't change the invoice dates. I'm just going to do that. I also like to do, we'll do $524 and, um, and uh, 22 cents just to have, again, another amount in there. So I'm going to do that. Again, some people have descriptions that they pull off of the, the invoice. I don't necessarily hear. So I'm going to put in here. Uh, sockeye uh, for our description today, okay? So easy enough. So I know I've added some numbers, but just think of it as a, a, a an, an easy button. By clicking autofill, after I've uh, captured these fields, they're automatically gonna fill out for me. So I'm gonna say, yep, let's go ahead and approve this header. Now, the other thing to note while that's uh, you know churning through there, uh, again, this header information and these vendor details, they come off of your settings within your accounting system, okay? So whatever you've set up in the vendor records in Sage, we're gonna honor those settings and those are the header fields that we will pull over and, uh, and show in HH2. Now, there are some companies that will actually go in into HH2 and actually change some of that uh, in our system because they want to collect additional header information, but that's, Ah, I, we don't need to go into much more detail. Just know that we, we bring over your settings from your accounting system. Same thing with your distributions, okay? So all of you have diff different distributions that you uh, will collect uh, for a specific vendor or vendor type, okay? As you can see here, we support commitments, commitment items, et cetera, job. What I'm going to do, instead of starting to type, I'll just kind of click over here on this side and just let you know that I can see these are the different commitments that are in our system uh, for this particular vendor, okay? We begin, once again, pulled those over from the accounting system, okay? Um, if I wanted to select a specific commitment, you'll notice that it automatically started filling out the commitment, the commitment items, the job, the cost code, the subcategory. And, and so that maybe is all I need to do. In, in the office, I know it's uh, going off of this commitment and go ahead and send this on the workflow. Send it to the project manager, whoever is in charge of taking a look at that uh, invoice just to approve it, okay? It might be as simple as that for you. Uh, the other thing to note while I've got the commitment up here is to click on this I. Uh, that's just information, right? We all know uh, whenever we're looking at other software, the I just, it's an icon for additional information. Well, if I wanted to know a little bit more about this commitment information or this commitment in the system, you can see that I can uh, see that information here. Okay, so again, just making it simple, easy. Uh, if you don't use commitments, don't worry about it. Uh, what we can do is completely take out the commitment in HH2. You know, it takes that out. Uh, let's just go ahead and delete, uh, you know, some of this other information here. Maybe all we know is the job, okay? Uh, we just know that it came in. Hey, this looks like it's for job B. Uh, this vendor's working on this job. Let's just stay with the Northwest Food Warehouse if you need to see the job selector. I could even start typing in part of the job name or number. Okay. Again, don't want to overshow things, but let's pretend today that we're not choosing a commitment. We're just saying all we know is the job in the office, and I want to send this on the workflow. So what I'm going to do is just route this document. It lets me know I've got some settings turned on. Hey, you've got some uh, expired insurance. Do you still want to keep going with the workflow? And I'm like, yes, 
Uh, we're not going to get into the weeds on that today. We're just saying, yep, I'm good, right? And then I can just go back to the other invoices. So if I'm working on this particular invoice, you know, I go in here and I do rinse and repeat, okay? But before I go on to showing you what it looks like on the mobile device, I want to know, Jeff, were there any questions that happened to have come in in regards to integration, pulling over invoices or anything like that? There was a question uh, regarding approval levels, like thresholds and oh. things like that. I know you'll okay. we'll probably touch on that as you get in there, but... Um... Okay, um, yeah, we definitely will. Okay, so um, that's great. Let's, let's, we're gonna pause on that comment and, and I love the idea of the workflow. So let's take it from there, but I just wanted to kind of cover how easy it was. We accepted a document, we, um, we OCR'd the document, we threw some distributions in there and we started the route. Now, a couple of other cool things. If I wanted to see this particular job manager route, I can click on this route via, and um, it just pulls up my, you know, what this particular uh, route or workflow looks like. So in this particular workflow that I'm gonna show you or, or go through today, I've got this little uh, step in my workflow that says, hey, um, maybe I want to leave this here in case um, on this particular document, I actually need it to go to someone else first. Well, does it need to go to a named user, a GL manager, an AP group manager, an HH2? So we give you this ability to kind of, you know, maybe it's not your typical route, but then after that individual sees it, it will then drop into the current route that you have in the system. So just know that these are very simple and, and easy to do. In addition to that, let's take you over to how those are built in HH2. It's called a workflow list. HH2 is definitely going to train you on how to build those. And we'll build a couple for your company. And then if you need to add workflows after you're done working with our implementation team, it's as easy as clicking a plus button up here and adding another workflow to your system. It's up to you. The one that I showed you today, again, was a very simplistic one where this goes from that no route to the super to the project manager to AP. Now, while I'm here, I will, would like to kind of let you know some of the settings that we pull over from Sage. Let's pretend for a moment that on the job record in Sage 300 CRE, you put in a project manager, a name for a PM. Well, the great thing about HH2 is if you're doing that correctly in Sage, HH2 will honor that setting or look at that setting in your system and automatically assign the project to a user in HH2 based upon what you've got set up on the job record in Sage. Okay, so if you have a project manager for job A, um, you don't need to go into HH2, go either in, into the manager record and assign him the job or go into the job record and assign the PM it's going to automatically pull over from that uh, record in Sage. So I like to let people know that it's, again, we, we pull a lot of information as much as we can from your system. Now, again, this is a simple workflow. I'm going to go back to my other workflows and let me show you a little bit more of a more complicated one that I've set up. And something like this might be set up once and you don't need any other workflows because for me, I have one that says, you know what, if I've coded this invoice from the, the level of uh, the AP you know, manager or the clerk, if it's coded to a job, just automatically route it through this workflow. If it's coded to a GL, route it to the GL manager or whoever I've got put in that place. Okay, so we've got a decision in there that HH2, can you can use decisions. Well, I've also put in an additional decision in this workflow that says, if this invoice is less than 5,000, just go ahead and send it. You know, it's okay. Uh, and, and I had a company just the other day who said, this is, this is exactly the way we would set it up because we need anything over five grand or 10 grand, it needed to go to another person in the company or persons. And you can do that as well. 
Okay. So again, those decisions are awesome. And then they all go back to the AP manager as the final level of approval to not only view them, but push them into the accounting system. Okay. So for the individual that asked that question, I hope that that was helpful in showing you the configurability and the ease of use uh, of setting up workflows in HH2. Okay, so let's do this. Um, many of you uh, say, well, part of my problem is my PMs aren't always in the office or when they're on vacation or whatever, some of them still like to be able to approve their invoices. They don't wanna to get too far behind in work, et cetera. So what I'm going to do today is if everything's working correctly, and I should have pulled this up earlier. So let's uh, cross our fingers and hope that my airplay is working okay today. There we go. I'm, I'm a lucky man. Um, okay, so I'm in our document flow app, and I'm just gonna show it to you on the phone just because, again, I could chew it on the tablet, and of course the tablet's a, a little larger form factor, but it's great to do it on the phone. So you can see I've, I've broken up some of my apps into a section here. Um, and this is my document flow app. And you can see that I've got a push icon right here, uh, push notification, excuse me. And it lets me know that, hey, I've currently got 13 invoices or whatever in my queue based upon what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna open that up in HH2, and this is just showing me invoices. So up at the top of the screen, that's what I'm working on at the present time. And if I scroll down, let's see if we can find our invoice that we're working on today. Oh, lo and behold, here's one for A1 Electric, invoice 5242022 for 524.22. That's the invoice that we just routed. So I'm logged in on my phone as that superintendent because that's who it's going to. Let's go ahead and open that up. So I just tapped on that particular invoice. I can see the image. I can swipe across or up and down and see the multiple pages. I can zoom in and out if I'm having a hard time seeing the invoice. I can go to the next um, uh, tab up top and go to the header information, see the header information there that's uh, located. And then I can go to the distribution. And as you can see, I've got this, uh, Hey, the reason it was routed to me is because I'm the super over the Northwest Food Warehouse. And uh, that's why it's in my queue because I'm the first uh, person in that line. Now, if I wanted to deny this or reroute it, I could, again, just for the sake of time, let's move through. Let's go ahead and do cost code. So once I do uh, choose a cost code, since a job's already there, I'm only gonna see those cost codes that have been set up on that job in Sage, okay? So they're job specific codes, so you're aware. Now you can see up here, favorite cost codes. Maybe I tend to code all my stuff to a certain cost code. I can favorite a particular cost code so that I don't have to look through the list. I also have the ability to search. So if there's a hundred codes on this job and instead of scrolling down and finding it, I can start typing and looking at that. I'm going to say we purchased some stuff for some aluminum windows today. We'll say that it's materials. So I'm just saying it's on aluminum windows, materials. That's what this invoice is for. And really, that's all I need to do. And if that's all, you know, I'm good. And I've got my distributions in there. I'm done as a user. Now, again, there's more things that I could do. I can annotate and do a number of things. But at this point, um, I can even hold, reject, dispute, delete, you know, again, depending on your um, uh, things that you turn on or off. I'm going to quickly put in a note just to show you some functionality in HH2. I'm going to tap on the plus button, tap in the center there, and then instead of typing, I will just use the microphone to describe why I coded the invoice to this particular cost code. And we'll just go ahead and use that. Again, just nice way for me to communicate back to the office anything I want in regards to that invoice. So I've been able to code it. And uh, now it's, it's really either available for me to just approve back there or just approve from the screen. Maybe 
for some of you, a lot of the coding is just done in the office and all you need to do, I'm gonna hit approve just to kind of move that along. So it takes it out of my queue and moves it on to the PM in my particular demo site. If, if the office has already done a lot of the coding and all you need to do is kind of take a look at it, you could just pop down here and just start approving a lot of these if, the, if they're automatically filled out. Okay, Jeff, was there any other questions that may have come in in regards to doing this on a mobile device before I kind of diverge and do a little bit uh, while I'm on the phone showing them how to gather a receipt? Uh, nothing else at the moment, Kevin. Okay, all right, great. So stay with me. Hopefully all this is uh, beneficial and you're liking what you're seeing today. Now, again, why I'm while I'm on the phone, I like to uh, also show the credit card functionality. So I'm in the same app and I want to capture a quick receipt. Okay, so I'm just gonna tap quick receipt. Uh, this is a, a receipt that I grabbed from Home Depot. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save that. And there's my receipt information. Okay. And if I want, I can, I can say, Hey, you know what? I want HH2 to do as much coding off of the, what they can find off this receipt as possible for me. So I'm going to tap auto OCR and you'll see that the vendor of course, uh, is my credit card company, my description didn't do a very good job this time. It just said E is the description sometime. Sorry, that was my my daughter, probably my granddaughter wanted to do some FaceTime. I thought I'd put my stuff on the, <laughs> do not disturb. Uh, we're gonna go into description and we're gonna come in and put the same type of uh, thing. Um, well, I need to spell sockeye right first, right? And we'll just kind of use that uh, receipt and then I'll submit to code. And again, right after I went to Home Depot, I set the receipt down on my truck uh, on the armrest, took a photo of it, say, you know what, before I forget, I want this. As you can see, I favorited the Fort Wayne Officers Club job. I'm gonna favorite that job. I'll say that we uh, will do aluminum windows again, just because that's uh, our theme today. We'll say that it's materials that we're picking up. So once again, that information comes from my system and uh, I've just coded it, very simple. It took the receipt, added the information and I'm good to go. If I wanna type a note one more time, this is a note on the receipt. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and uh, save and close. So that's it. Now, what happens with that receipt, right? Where does it go? How does it land in HH2? How do I reconcile that with my credit card company, et cetera? Uh, we'll talk a little bit more, but let's just, uh, we'll do one more thing. I can go look at the receipts there today. And I probably should have changed the amount because I've done a few of these, but let's go look at the uh, windows. It's this one right here. So 9684, we did it to the Fort Wayne Officers Club, aluminum, aluminum windows and materials. Okay, so it sits in, in HH2 in the receipt queue. And then what happens is you will download uh, a statement from your bank into a CSV file. You'll load it into HH2. HH2 in the background is gonna reconcile everything. And if it finds a receipt for 9684 on this particular date um, for that uh, card, et cetera, it's gonna match it up and it will technically turn it into a mini invoice, right? That's gonna be pushed into Sage, automatically hit uh, you know, your job cost, et cetera, okay? So anyway, that's kind of the way we do it. I won't kind of go into any more detail in regards to that. You might ask the question, what happens if there's not a receipt in the queue, right? Let's say my guys are still having a hard time, even with HH2 getting their receipts in, uh, well, in HH2, um, we create what we call as a temporary receipt. And depending on your workflows, if there were no receipt attached, but we now have a transaction in our system, it will route out to that individual. If that individual has a copy of that receipt or they can find it in their glove compartment or pocket, et cetera, then that individual would then have the ability to upload a copy of that. If they lost the receipt, then they might write or 
put on there, hey, no longer can find the receipt, but this is what it was for, the job and the cost code, and then send it on through. Okay, hopefully that made sense. All right, let's jump out of that real quick. Uh, I keep saying real quick. I got to stop doing that on my demos. Um, I'm going to log in as Tom Brooks. So Tom is my project manager. Again, if you remember uh, in what I was doing, and Tom comes into his invoice queue and see all sees all of the invoices in his queue. You'll notice that Tom sees this particular invoice, 52422 in the system, and he can open up that invoice, uh, et cetera. And you'll see, you know, why he coded the invoice to this particular. <laughs> it was interesting. I thought it said cost code at first. I thought for sure my thing had changed it. I, I must go to Costco too often. Um, and I'll put another note. This is a note from the PM. Okay, so the reason we have these, you can actually have the notes. If you want them to pop up, they can. If you don't necessarily need that, you don't need to worry about it. Um, I'm gonna show you one other thing here because uh, not sure uh, why that particular invoice. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, anyway, uh, what I'll do is I'm just gonna come in here and uh, we'll, we'll choose something else um, on this particular one. Uh, just to have it in the system. I'm just going to go in and change that uh, for a minute. Okay, so we, we've gone in, maybe the project manager wanted to make a change. Uh, again, not sure why that didn't come over um, the way that I'd coded it. And I think part of it is I it was user error that I, I failed to save that actual document before approving. So that was a bad on my part. Okay, so we're gonna kind of just change some of the coding there. Uh, if we're good to go, uh, this particular manager says, hey, I've coded it and uh, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go ahead and approve this invoice, okay? So it just says, yep, I'm good. You know, bring me to the next queue. Again, here's a new uh, invoice in my queue ready to uh, review and approve. Now, I will pause for just a minute, too, on this particular one. Some of you do multiple distributions. So let's say that this manager sees this, this one that came through for 16613. If I need to split that amount off and say, you know what, well, $50 of this particular invoice actually goes to another job, right? So we can support that as well. That, that goes to the Clackamas Office Park job. And I know it's going to temp utilities and uh, I'll just choose the category, okay? So I can do that as well. So now I've got multiple distributions there um, and uh, just kind of save that draft. So uh, that's another way to code to multiple uh, jobs. You can also do multiple line items. Again, I'm not gonna cover that in the presentation today, but we can handle multiple line items on an invoice as well. Um, okay, Jeff, while I transition back to uh, our um, AP uh, manager, were, were there any additional questions that may have come in in the meantime? I don't, I don't have any yet. Other okay. than the comments, other than the comments about the operator error, but I won't mention that one. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Uh, and if you can, as you go back and review this recording, will you just go scrub that out, please? Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, put, we'll delete that section. Clean, clean that up for me. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, everybody. Again, thank you um, kind of helping me or letting me get through some of this. We've got about, uh, I would say, let's do 10 minutes more and we'll kind of jump in there um, and answer any other questions and maybe talk about pricing. So last but not least, again, there's more things that HH2 can do. We've mainly focused on invoices. We've focused on credit cards. Just know that we also have uh, the ability to add some vendor compliance stuff within HH2. It is a, another feature, but again, if I showed you everything, we'd be here for a couple of hours. Also pay apps that HH2 has the ability to have a vendor go in and create a pay app. 
I'm not going to dive into that in this particular presentation, but want you to know that there's so much more in HH2 than just the invoices and the credit cards. Let's go to the invoice list. And I'll just show you some other things uh, that we have going on in here. Um, in the invoice list, uh, we have a number of different either filters across the top that I can use if I'm working on a particular uh, pay period, uh, if I want to specify uh, and update the accounting date, because for some of you, you know, those accounting dates, maybe you've closed some things and you want to update this particular accounting date within HH2, you can do that here in the corner. Let's go just find the invoice that we just routed through. So um, I'm going to go just type in the 524 is the number. As you can see, there's the invoice, there's the coding, um, there's the progress, et cetera. And it's, it's all found in here. If I go into that particular invoice, this is a note from the PM, uh, et cetera. And uh, everything looks good there. This is why I coded the invoice, particular cost code, uh, et cetera. Okay, so that's in there for the AP manager to, to review and approve. They can approve it here or just go in and see any annotations if they need to, okay? So just be aware of that. Let's go back to that invoice list. In addition to either searching by invoices, maybe I'm also concerned about a number of other items that I want to filter, which is why HH2 has that little funnel button or filter that I can go in and say, hey, I'm just working on this particular vendor. So me all, everybody, <coughs> that is, uh, you know, A1 Electric. Just show me invoices for that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to have to take a drink real quick. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Something... <clears throat> excuse me, something got stuck in my throat there. Um, I can filter by job, et cetera, categories. <clears throat> Some people even want to see, you know, all invoices with a particular type. Just show me today I'm working on credit cards. Just show me all my credit cards or my reimbursements. So these filters are great. One other filter that uh, are commonly used is by... Um, assignee, you know, or the individual uh, that these things are assigned me uh, assigned to. So <clears throat> those are great. Um, again, I won't go in too much more detail. Um, <clears throat> oh, let me do one last thing. Let me go in here and just add one more filter. I'm going to select um, not by, uh, I'm going to do status. <clears throat> I'm going to say, uh, say I want to see everything in final review in HH2. So I'm going to add that filter. And in HH2, we use a vernacular or a term called final review. Final review simply means that I have gone through and approved all of these invoices. Okay, I've reviewed them. I've approved them. I'm now ready to import them into the accounting system which is why on all of these invoices, you see this icon down the side. That just says that these guys, these invoices are ready to be pushed into the accounting system. Um, now there's a couple of things that I would also like to specify here. Some people say, well, Kevin, that's redundant as an AP manager that I approve them, but then I have to approve them again or push them into the accounting system. Do I have the capability of approving them and having them automatically push into AP? The answer is yes. Okay, some people like just one other step just to confirm and maybe pushing a batch of them in together. So I could just say final review, I've approved all these, click on this icon up here, which will batch everything together and click a button and it will automatically export all of these invoices uh, into or import them into Sage. Okay, so just FYI, that's how HH2 does it. So you can either do it in this phase 
or one by one, completely up to you. If I wanted to highlight certain ones and say, um, you know, hey, these are the ones I want to send in, then I might click on those and push them in. Um, so really that's HH2 um, in routing a document. Oh, what I should have done, shoot. Uh, let's, do, let's do one more of those. Let me, uh, and I could have saved that filter. Let's see, uh, let's, let's go back to that one and do it by status because I wanted to show you one other item. In that final review, some of you go through and want to, uh, you want to gather and say, hey, I'm doing things for a particular vendor. I need to do it for a particular time period and I need to send all the backup. So if I happen to come in here and say, hey, I want uh, this invoice here, uh, this invoice, and these are, uh, you know, these are some of the backups that I need, then I might highlight those, click to PDF, and download those in, my, in our system. And uh, what you will see <clears throat> are not only the invoice, copies of the invoice, the pages. So there's my two pages there. I can see the details and the payments on those invoices. And I can see the history. Who took a look at that invoice? When did they see it? Who approved it? Did they add any information, et cetera? So this is just all my invoices there with different information on each one of those, okay? And then again, you can print that out, that information out and send it to whoever you'd like or email those batch copies, okay? Um, again, I didn't go uh, in too much more depth on the credit card piece. Hopefully that was self-explanatory. Um, if you kind of want to know where, you know, you, you push in your credit cards, uh, you just go to the uh, um, credit card transactions, import those credit card transactions. Now, yeah, one other, there, yeah, yeah, is there another there question, a, Jeff? Yeah, there was a question around the credit card. Is that, oh, the question was, was that a separate, is that a separate piece or is that included in the uh, core? In the core, yeah, great question. So everything that I just showed you today is included in the product, everything. So credit cards, invoices, um, the receipts, uh, actually even the vendor compliance information, the pay app information, everything that we have that we're showing here is included in the core. Um, another question you may have had too, because we know that other solutions out there charge extra for the OCR, the OCR is included in HH2 as well. So you think about all the functionality and if you're using desperate, uh, disparate other solutions today, and you might like, oh, I'm using this for credit cards and I'm using this for invoices and I'm using this for pay apps, just know that HH2 uh, may be able to handle you know, all of those things within one application. That's a great question. Um, one last thing I was going to show too is the invoice aging summary that a lot of people like. If I wanna come in here and, uh, and select a user and say, hey, you know what? Uh, Tom Brooks really struggles with invoices. I need to see how many he has in his queue. Uh, then I can see what vendor, uh, the number of overdue inv invoices, et cetera. And if I clicked on that, it would just pull up those invoices. So that's another great queue. Well, it's 12.55. Um, Jeff, were there any other questions that came in before I kind of send people to our website to take a little deeper dive? Oh, the, the proverbial price question, but I know you're going there next. Okay, let's do it. Uh, you just need to go to hh2.com, especially if you're a current customer. Uh, just all you need to do is go to hh2.com. In the menu, you can click on products. Uh, if you want to learn more about AP routing, you can click on learn more. There are some shorter videos if you want to show people that. If you want pe people to see the video that, uh, that Jeff and I did today, uh, Jeff will be routing that out to everybody. So you'll have a copy of that as well. So just click on learn more or explore the other products that we also offer here at HH2. Uh, but I'm gonna click on learn more right there. And then right in the menu on the document flow product, I click on pricing. And uh, with this particular product, it's really based on, as with all of our products, it's based on usage, okay? <clears throat> Again, if you're using another solution today, 
or if you're not familiar with HH2 and how we price things, we price it based on usage, not users. So once you sign up for a subscription to our services, we at the end of every month simply uh, invoice you based upon uh, with this product, the number of invoices uh, or transactions that are routed through HH2. Now, my document only had two pages. I often get the question, well, Kevin, what if an invoice has 20 pages? Is each page counted as a document? And the answer is no, okay? If an invoice has two pages, one page, 20 pages, it's counted as one invoice. Um, just so you're aware, okay? And uh, you might ask, well, why do you have, what's the difference between regular price and with pro support? Uh, we are explaining to everybody right now, um, as of uh, August of last year, everybody has to be, all new customers have to be on pro support. Um, uh, this is just for our current customers that have been on for a long time with us. Uh, they've been paying this price. Um, we just added another tier called pro support and, and it's required. Uh, there are a few uh, small startup fees or sign up fees in regards to implementation and training. I'd be happy to talk to you a little bit about those, but for the most part, you will sign up uh, in addition to those fees just at the lowest tier because we don't how don't know at this point in time how many invoices you're going to be uh, routing through HH2. So your first month, uh, it's the 279 plus your sign up fees, and then after that, it's based on usage. Please again remember OCR, unlimited users, credit cards, uh, invoices pay apps, uh, you know, compliance, a number of different items are available in this product, okay? If you want to know more, I am going to bring up, if I can find, uh, I'm gonna pull up my information and I'll, as well as uh, the information and some of you are current clients may also have worked with uh, Britton Bauer in the past. Uh, Britton's our sales uh, manager. I know I need to update this side. He's actually our director of sales. But this is my information. Feel free to reach out to Britton or I, and we'd be happy to help you. If you're more comfortable, and reach it out to Jeff and the people at Sockeye first to talk to them about things, uh, and they, you know, they can pass you back over to us. But however you'd like, uh, that's our information. And Jeff, once again, thank you so much for the platform. Does anybody have any other questions? I got one last question that came in, Kevin, to wrap up with, and it was about that. The question was, is there a, an unlimited pricing model? Um, no. Oh, well, I mean, well, no. I mean, you just keep scrolling down, right? And uh, so no unlimited. Uh, it just, we, we base it just on the number of documents, but we go down quite a ways. Um, we are also just entertaining. Um, we just got, I just finished up with a meeting, another meeting with the CEO. And uh, we are looking into also offering a yearly um, uh, price for people that might be discounted off of the, uh, the monthly price if you want to sign up for a year long contract with HH2. Stay tuned on that, nothing is finalized, but just to let you know, uh, that was just discussed about an hour ago with our CEO. Great, well, thanks, Kevin. I know we're right at the top of the hour and I, Really appreciate uh, your presentation and your time today. A great job as always. And thanks everybody for taking the time to attend. And like uh, Kevin said, you know, you can reach out to us. You'll get a follow-up email from Sakai. And if you want somebody to reach out to you, let us know or feel free to reach out to me directly or another salesperson at Sakai that you might work with that can help you as well. So everybody enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, thanks again for your uh, participation. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jeff. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.